I found the unique Ngakwe trade very interesting for several reasons. I already kind of talked about the other side of things. So again, if you didn't hear, the Raiders, this is uh, going back a bit now, the Raiders traded Unique Ngakwe to Rocky Asin, just straight up one for one. Uh, and I kind of talked about Rocky Asin, and it seems like there's a chance he might regress, but the question is how much will he regress? He could still be a good player. And for Ngakwe, it's the opposite. I mean, this is the definition of, for the Colts, they're buying low and selling high at the same time. They had a player who kind of had some flukier stats that went well, so they're trying to get rid of him and get as much value as possible. And I'm sure the Raiders are aware of the fact that, you know, some of these, you know, he might not be quite as good as he was last year, but they're hoping he can still be solid. Ngakwe is the flip side. Ngakwe is someone who's been a good player, but did not play well for last year for the Raiders. He did not perform as well as they were hoping he would given the contract. So the question is, how good is he really? So here are his PFF grades. If you're a fan of this stuff, this is how he performed last year. You see his grade in 2021 of 47.1, which is abysmal, especially the run defense grade being just a 28.6. And in fact, that's not the only time we've seen this happen. His rookie year, he was also uh, very similar, uh, you know, not the best there. So that's fascinating to me. The pass rush did go down a little bit, wasn't as bad, but did drop uh, a little bit from what we've seen in the past. So that's what we're dealing with. And the question is, okay, did the Raiders use him wrong? I wouldn't think so. It seems like they used him the way you're supposed to to use him and even the, the previous year when he played for two different teams you could argue he wasn't as good but he was still pretty solid you know 70 grade that's a good pass rusher although it is fair to say he has yet to live up to that second year where he was really just fantastic so that's kind of where he's at although now going over here and looking at his actual just pure numbers so just the production what he did the production was pretty good i mean 10 sacks you'll you'll take that right that's the most he's had uh in a few years um 36 pressures which is still pretty good again it's not the 51 pressures he had in 2018 but 36 pressures is still a solid season so he was not a a mess out there by any means but he wasn't spectacular according to the box score stats and according to pff he was just terrible so who's right well i watched some film and he definitely disappeared at times especially in the running game he would get moved but we saw some flashes as well and this is going to be an example of one where i've highlighted where he is on the field and watch what happened as you see ngakwe is going to make a pretty good move and able to get a quarterback hit there although they ruled a late hit ended up getting flagged but again you'll live with those those happen from time to time and i took her a little bit fluky he did a great job of creating the pressure and did a good job with his hands and kind of when i was watching film I kind of felt the same way I felt about Allen Robinson which is with Allen Robinson my conclusion was okay he wasn't ideal last year but I'm willing to bet on the bigger sample size and not say that you know he's coming off a down year I'm willing to bet on what I've seen from him in previous years I feel similar with Ngakwe like here's another example of what Ngakwe can do again going up against the Bears I know it's the Bears yeah all that stuff but still watch what he's gonna do uh, against the left tackle number 71 there he is gonna be able to use that speed rush that he's been pretty good at and get two fields for a sack there so really good defensive play from Ngakwe and this is something that Ngakwe is more than capable of of doing he didn't do it as consistently last year there's no denying that but it's not fair to say that he didn't do it at all last year because he still did show some flashes finally one more I want to talk about again we're not getting into too much detail and talking about all this stuff just kind of wanting to show that like no there were some good plays I get that like Again, I agree with the PFF grade. I don't think his tape was as strong as we've seen it in previous years, especially in the running game. But let's be honest, we tend to pay more attention to the passing game uh, and really the pass rush game when we talk about pass rushers. And as you see, Ngakwe is going to be able to create some pressure. So I get the appeal from the Colts perspective. I, I get both, basically. I, I get the idea from the Raiders of saying, eh, we don't know if this guy's going to be producing still. Let's take a guy who doesn't fit our defense, which he he doesn't fit the Raiders' new defense. I would assume the Raiders are going to do uh, Patriots-style defense, in which case Ngakwe wouldn't fit that. And also, the Raiders needed a corner. Now, will Rocky Sin be that guy? Remains to be seen. But again, I get the logic behind it. But I get the logic behind it from the Colts' perspective of, listen, uh, this is the guy who historically has played pretty well. Uh, he's a guy who's had a pretty good career and did not have a good year last year, according to, like, you know, tape, but the production was still there, so let's bank on the production continuing to be there. 
I'm always kind of in the belief of I'd rather have better coverage than better pass rush. So give me the guy who is a corner as opposed to the guy who's a pass rusher. But that's a conversation for another day. But I just find this whole situation to be very fascinating and not one we really see at the NFL level hardly at all. I mean, when's the last time we've seen just a one for one player swap? I mean, that almost never happens in the NFL. It's almost always uh, either like multiple players and then usually there's draft picks are involved. In fact, usually draft picks are the main force for at least one of the teams in the the you know in there whereas for other sports teams will trade player for player all the time like remember in hockey it seems like that one for one trades happen uh, especially with the oilers a decent amount so uh definitely you know kind of rare there but also just rare in the way that it's done i think typically the way you view a one for one player swap and the way that you typically do this stuff is hey we need a edge rusher you guys need a corner we have corner depth you guys have edge rusher depth let's just you know make this work that way we're all complete across the board that's the traditional sense of why you would do a player swap and this isn't not doing that i guess i would say because like you know uh the raiders listen anyone next to max crosby is going to get a lot of one-on-one matchups so that's just going to be a benefit in its own way uh i do think the raiders could have used they needed someone to back the to take the place of uh, you know, take the place of Casey Hayward, who ended up going in free agency. So Rocky Sin can potentially be that guy. So I think that's what they're doing here. But again, I find it a very interesting situation. And especially with pass rusher, where Unique Ngakwe is not the norm here. I guess that's one of the last thing I wanted to bring up is that for Ngakwe, typically the way pass rushers work is that if you're a 40 pressure guy, you're going to consistently be a 40 pressure guy. Not exactly, of course. There will be some ups and downs, some peaks and valleys. But for the most part, when you get a pass rusher like that, you know what you're going to get. That's kind of the benefit of pass rush as opposed to coverage is that with good pass rush, you pretty much know what to expect. They tend to not have that much variance. Coverage varies tons year in, year out. Pass rush varies sturdy. And Gakwe has been much more like this. You know, he's been very up and down. He has not been... Uh, sturdy whatsoever and he's been incredibly inconsistent sometimes it's been awesome right he had a couple of really good years with Jacksonville sometimes it's not so awesome like what we saw a lot out of him last year but I would still say that I I think I'm still willing to bank on him being good I I think that I would again how much I don't know but again it's weird because I totally see positives and negatives about both players from this trade which is why I've made several videos about it now just because I am so fascinated by it and I don't think we've seen too much like it uh if I have to give like a final prediction on Ngakwe I think he'll probably be solid I don't think he'll ever be like a 50 plus pressure guy again I think that was a kind of I don't think he's quite that guy but I could see him hitting like at least you know like high 30s, 40 pressures, which is still really valuable. So I think there's reason to still be optimistic for the Colts. There is a chance he just sucks, but I think I'd, I'd bank on him being solid. In the Raiders, I mean, he doesn't fit their scheme. Uh, it's it's kind of like you had to get rid of him, got value back for him. I have no problem with that. But yeah, that's kind of my final thoughts on all of this. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on all of this? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.